What's going on guys? Uh, this is going to be the second week as a physics student video. I'm starting on a Saturday because this is where all the cool stuff starts happening. I'm about to go up to ODU for a physics open house and tell people how to be good at majoring in physics. This is probably my favorite experiment here. About to make some liquid nitrogen based, oh, that's a foot, ice cream. No filming? So what are we seeing here? <laughs> Was this coldness? <laughs> we're seeing coldness? Water. Correct. <laughs> what we're seeing is actually clouds. So it looks kind of like all this uh, all this smoky looking stuff coming off. Looks like it might be the nitrogen. But it's actually just that the air around the nitrogen is getting cold and oh, condensing down. It's kind of the same way you can see your breath Why? out on a cold day. Or if you ever open your freezer and there's little clouds. Did you catch some? Yeah. Actually, yeah. Let's back up just a little bit. Yes, but all of this frost is much colder than we normally think it would be. All right, so can you guys tell me why this works? Uh, I have a guess. Yeah? So Love to hear it. From the, from, okay. So both balls are traveling at the same speed at this point. Right. But then it's speed, but the ball on this side will speed up from there. Okay. And it will try to do its speed back up here. So in total, it will just it'll get there faster simply because it's moving at a faster speed from that point at, to this point. That's and then it moves at the same speed from here. That's exactly that's correct. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's always a, uh, so contrary to popular belief, so everyone knows that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the fastest path between two points is a straight line. About to go watch Dr. Terzik give his lecture on gravitational waves. Einstein postulated uh, his theory of gravity, it's general relativity, which uh, replaced our understanding of gravity uh, in the way of Newton. When we start physics and, and do phys first physics course, we learn about gravity being so interaction between two massive objects. And here is the, this is probably the only equation I have here today, so that's it for the equation. And mercifully did not include Einstein's equation. We just visit, finished the physics open house. Yo, I've never been back here. Am I allowed back here? No, get out. Go, get, get, get. Look at all, look at all these secrets I'm gonna expose on the internet. So this is my other office, guys. I got my cool utensils over here. <laughs> we do like crazy things with this studying stuff. I am about to start studying for thermodynamics because I have a take home exam and I looked at it and I have no idea how to do it yet so I gotta start actually learning before I attempt to solve any problems then if for some odd reason I can finish that exam today I'm gonna start studying for uh, partial differential equations because I have an exam in that on Monday so I decided to do uh, partial differential equations instead of thermal because I don't need that kind of negativity in my life right now and somewhere in between me convincing myself that I was studying, I made this. It's just me, me and my friend. I mean, haters will say it's Photoshop. I figured since I'm studying partial differential equations right now, I might try to explain kind of what it is without going into the math at all. So, yeah, let's see if that can happen. So right now, I'm going to try to explain what a partial differential equation is without using any of the math associated with it. So let's pretend we have some function, x as a function of t, of t. x being some position that's dependent on time. 
So if you look at this graph, it makes it look like the uh, function is going somewhere, someone's going somewhere, turns around and goes back to where they started. So we can call this whole thing x of t. But since it's not in the same location throughout the graph, that means that it's moving, that means it has a velocity associated with it, some change in position over time. So we can call that a change in, oops, so we can call that a change in x over a change in time. Now if we let this time get arbitrarily close to zero, meaning these walls start closing in on a single point, that starts to look like the slope of a tangent line through that point, and that's exactly the definition of a derivative of x with respect to time. As you guys are aware, this other systems can be more complicated like that than that. Uh, for example, if you start speeding up or slowing down, and that's what we call acceleration. So if we define acceleration to be a change in velocity over time, we can uh, extend that and expand upon it using this definition of velocity and call that a change of the change of position over a change of the change of time. Don't let that scare you. It's equal to acceleration. And if we, again, let that change go really, really close to zero, we can call that either one change, one derivative of velocity over time, or a second derivative of position over time. So take a step back and realize that we have three quantities that describe x. We have acceleration, we have velocity, and we have the original function. An equation that relates an original function with its derivatives is called a differential equation. And there's a whole course in that in every university that every physics major has to take. But, as you can see, this differential equation only depends on time. It doesn't depend on any other variables. We live in three-dimensional, uh, three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. So it takes four numbers to specify where someone is at a given time. So that means that our equation, f, doesn't just depend on time, it depends on x, it depends on y, z, and t. And all of these variables can be described as a change in one with respect to the other. So when you think about that, how many different combinations of changes of x with respect to y or t, or how many derivatives you're taking of it, the math associated with multivariable functions and their derivatives is called partial differential equations. It's 10 o'clock. Uh, I feel like getting some sleep now and tackling more thermal in the morning. Or not thermal. Partial differential equations in the morning because that took a lot out of me. Alright, so here I am in bed, like about to, about to go to bed. And then Kelly, who's in my thermal class, wants to tell me that she's still working on our exam. And I'm the one going to bed. <laughs> Not up in here! No, I got up. Now I'm doing thermal again. That's it. I'm going to finish it all right now. She can't be the only one working on it. Got another like hour and a half to kill before my last tutoring session. So I'm gonna try to knock out some of this E and M homework, get some of this special relativity done. Here's here's a little glimpse. What do we got? Consider the Lorentz matrix. Show that L times the transpose of L equals the identity matrix, and the, the determinant is plus or minus one. Fair. Damn, so I have 10 subscribers that aren't my friends. <laughs> Should like... And they like comment on it, they're, the, they're so nice. They are? What yeah. They say? They're like, really appreciate the video, like keep, keep them coming. Nice to show up. I sent you a message. I'll 
Facebook, yeah. What's up, guys? What do you want? Uh, what are you doing? You're looking for something? Are you doing the cock board that way, you cranky? <laughs> yes. No. Oh, I feel great now. Nothing makes you feel better than sleeping for like 13 hours straight. I was spoiled last night. I slept for one whole hour. <laughs> Here's where daddy lives. Yeah, I started eating. <laughs> it's a math joke. What's the joke? I don't really heard him say no your limits out. I'm just playing because we're in I just found this out for the limits. I should have mentioned that she came on these two. I've been looking at math more like this. Alright, so it's Thursday and it's about 7.40 p.m. and I really haven't recorded anything today because it really hasn't been an eventful day at all. I mean, um, we got our thermal statistical physics exams back. I actually got an A on it, so I'm really happy because that's like the one class this semester where I haven't been very confident in anything that I do in it. So seeing me, that, that was our first exam, so seeing that I got an A on it just really gave me that little confidence booster. I'm telling myself I'm going to record today. I've done none yesterday, like whatsoever. I only have E&M today and uh, a, a work meeting, so it's, I don't know what I'm gonna film yet, but I'm gonna film, I'm gonna film a lot more today. I don't care if I'm folding laundry or something. You guys are gonna see it today. We go in to... Oh, don't, don't you, don't you roll your eyes in there. We're going to E&M. There's Weinstein's office. My hero. My savior. Let's look at this. As an example, and that would really do me for today. Let's take our regular four, our four vector of position and time. It will trans by construction it will transform under the Lorentz transformation to our other quantity, to our other frame, what we can relate it to. Now let's take the inner product of these two vectors and just as we showed a few moments ago, this quantity is a scalar quantity which is Lorentz invariant. I swear, every E&M lecture that I go to, the class just starts getting more and more interesting. So now, as you saw from uh, probably the previous clip, we're doing special relativity, and we're starting to do the four-vector formalism of it. And um, I was a little lost in class, to be honest, because it's, 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 it's new, it's new. Uh, but if you saw in the last clip, it says at, at one point it gives you some math identity, and it expands on that, and it goes, Clearly, this leads to this, and I looked over and I was like, oh. yeah, <laughs> duh, duh. <laughs> uh, all right, but I'm about to go to the gym. Um, then I have a lot of work due next week, so I'm gonna try to get a head start on that because I have to be up at ODU at 9 a.m. tomorrow because I volunteered to do the uh, admitted students day for the physics department, and I was like, oh yeah, by the way, what time should I be there? They're like, 9 a.m. I was like, it's like the middle of the night. What up, dog? What's up? It's that philosophy major, Cully. Cully, say, say a philosophy word. A philosophy word? Epistemology? I knew it that you were gonna. God, I should have called that already. I was like, he's gonna say philosophy. All right. Epistemology. What does that word mean? Study of knowledge. Study of knowledge. All right, it's a little after 8 a.m. I'm about to go up to ODU for the admitted students' day. Um, we're running a little bit late, so I gotta rush on over there, but yeah, let's go see what that's all about. Admitted Students Day, how, and this is for the physics department right now. How many students do you think, on average, normally, will we get in here? Ten. Roughly ten? Oh no. And we got all the other sciences over here. Smile for the camera. 
Because I'm, I'm contemplating my right now. I'm in uh, astrophysics and aeronautical engineering. But I'm just like, should I cover major and just use uh, the same time as I do uh, it, it, it really takes longer to do both, but, but there's a lot of the cost, especially in the first say, couple of years, it's the same cost. It's very similar to the mass courses. The physics courses that the engineers require is the same one that you would take as a physics major, so you can wait and see. Just start, but take some engineering courses, take some the physics courses and see what they actually like better. So basically this whole event is to like show admitted students that are prospective physics students, like um, give them the student's perspective on saying what it's like and then we hand them off to a professor to give them kind of like the formal lowdown of this is what you gotta take, blah blah blah, this is what we offer. But then it's my job to show that it's still fun and not boring. So I'm gonna do my best to do that. Has anyone else come? He's very proud of his YouTube Just channel. Two people. <laughs> 14 subscribers. Oh wow, really? Yeah, it's popping off. I have two. I watched your oh, really? videos. I watched your videos. Too. Really? We should link your YouTube channel to our SPS Facebook. Boom. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be really cool. It's not great anymore. So we, we've got those two people that came by so far. Is anyone else going to stop to see what's up? Oh, well, judging Probably by the two signatures, probably should not put that on. <laughs> 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 yes, their emails, right? This one is actually their personal email, not just their ODU. And their social security number. How many people would you say have uh, like come through this building so far today? If you had to estimate. 200. 200? Yeah. So out of those roughly 200, two of them have wanted to be possible physics majors. So that's 1%. That's not too bad. We are done with the Admitted Students Day. That's a wrap. Just I think that'll be it for this week as a physics student. Uh, thanks for watching, Mom and like the one or two other people that watch my videos. I really like making these, so I'm probably definitely gonna make this as like a series or whatever. Um, I also wanna start doing like top five like misconceptions about science and things, th things of that nature, kinda broaden it uh, and not be so subject specific to physics because again, the idea of this channel is yeah, to get people interested in, in physics but also science as a whole. So if you have any, have any suggestions on videos you want to see, topics you want to discuss or explain, comment in the comment section and I'll consider it. That'd be fun to do. Alright, bye guys. Love you.